These are one of the only lizards that will live in family groups in the wild. They can live up to 17 family members at one time. These are called the Gigi skink. So Gigi skinks are naturally from Australia. These guys can be found all over Australia from Western Australia to Queensland. And they typically inhabit different types of woodlands and just they're all over the place, honestly. A lot of the Gigi skinks that have been found in the wild have been found in core hollows of like eucalyptus trees or, or in between limestone slabs. You see this animal, it has a bunch of spikes on the tail and what they love to do is jam themselves into small little crevices and they'll basically use this tail as a defense mechanism so nothing can pull them back because of the way the, the spikes are shaped. Gigi skinks for the most part are going to be very secretive creatures. They like to bask and then when they see a predator coming or any sort of movement, they'll hide into the little crevices. It's not an animal that's super social. They are definitely one of the most unique skink species out of Australia. And believe it or not, these guys actually have a blue tongue as well. Dude, look at that blue tongue. So the way we set these guys up, they are from Australia, they are from arid areas, so they do like it pretty dry. So we start with a dry substrate, anything from sand, clay, pea pebbles, rocks, Anything like that that doesn't hold humidity too well is great. And then on top of that, they love slate rocks. And like I mentioned before, they love being able to wedge themselves in. So I do, I create a type of layering with all these slate rocks so they can just get in there and wedge themselves in the rocks. That's how they feel comfortable. That's how they live in the wild. For the heat, I like to keep them at about 105 to 110 degrees. Now, if you are keeping it that warm, you want to be sure they are able to escape the heat. You don't want the entire cage to be 105 degrees. No, they need to be able to escape the heat. The ambient temperature in that enclosure is anywhere like mid to high 80s. That's perfectly fine for them. And then I also love to add a lot of branches, cork bark. They absolutely love cork bark. Like I said, anything tight, they're going to just wedge themselves in there and feel right at home. And we'll also provide provide high output 10.0 UVB. These are desert dwellers, so they do need that high output, high intensity UVB. So one of the most unique features of Gigi skinks is that they actually live in family groups. When they have babies, we will actually leave the babies in there with the parents for a long time, basically up until we have to ship them. And if you look closely right here, there is the mom literally cuddling with the baby right there. So this is really interesting because most lizard species will actually, you know, lay their eggs or even give live birth and then just forget about their babies or their offspring. But Gigi skinks are live bearers, bearers, or live bearers, and they will actually just stick around with the parents. So it's super unique, unlike anything else in the lizard world. And I'm gonna show you what these babies look like. Look how tiny these babies are. I think I'm literally crushing one as we speak. Why well, you don't do that? <laughs> how many are there? Yeah. So we got a little family of Gigi's here. And this is how small these babies come out. And obviously they give live birth. How many do they give? Um, they can give like up to eight. They can give a lot, but she normally gives fives. I, I saw at least three. I'm sure there was more, but they were all scattering around. But it's just so cool to see an animal that will actually like have a family and they won't just abandon their children, right? Yeah, and a lot of times you'll see the babies basking on top of the parents. Yeah, that's so cool. cool. So we're going to try and find out how many babies we have and then we're gonna put them back. We just wanna know. Stuff out of your way. And of course, this is mom. This is mom, right? Um, I gotta see the other one. Might be. She still looks the, thick. The other one's higher pattern. Oh, 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 oh. oh there's a baby. There's a baby. Well, yeah, I think is... this is mom. Wow, look at, and look at the difference empty. in these two animals right here. Obviously, this one is lighter, has a lot more pattern, but just a really pretty animal. This one's a little bit lighter brown. Uh, what's that, three babies so three far? Three so far. There yeah, might be a lot. Probably. Go on that Watch, a lot of times the babies like to hide under this, so when I move okay. this. Oh, yep, I told you. Oh. Ain't about to lose one. They love this hiding under this thing. Where'd it go? It disappeared like Houdini. I know, right? With no trace. Yep. Oh, five. Two. Five, so five. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I know. I'm gonna, come on. Get, get, get over there. Yeah, so she's throwing out just fives. 
Good job, Mom. They're so pretty when they're fresh born. Look how much pattern they have. Mom and dad and one big happy family. And in the wild, they'll just live all together like this. There has been seen, you know, groups of up to 17 individual animals. Typically when there's really sexually mature males is when they might deviate and go find another group. But for the most part, they'll just stick with each other and they'll just hang out all the time. Like Manny was saying, they'll bask with each other. They'll they, eat they with were, each other. They're literally cuddling when <laughs> I found them, so. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, like Gigi's. That's so sweet. These were just born, like, maybe as early as yesterday. That was perfect. That's perfect timing. Thank you, my God. Thank you. Oh, it bit me. Did it really? Yeah, she bit me. It's the first time ever. And Gigi skinks are notoriously hard to sex. I think most skink species are. One of the signs that, you know, males will have over females is that larger head. When they're fully grown, it's just hard to tell. You could pop them too, right? Yeah, so you can pop, you can like a ball python to see if they have hemipenes when they're about like six months to a year. Once they're older than that, you can't really do that anymore because now they developed a lot of muscle there. So you can't really pop it out like you used to. They're like clenching their butt cheeks together so you don't pop it out. I can see why you like this. I like this. Yeah, right? It's like satisfying getting their shot off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the family unit back. Gotta keep that nuclear family together. You can together. see they immediately try to just get away from us, hide. They're so cute. And these are the babies. So let's put the babies back with the parents. Here you go, guys. Try to shoot that way. Oh, uh, they won't. Go that way. So Gigi skinks are big time omnivores. They are opportunistic feeders, so they'll kind of like eat just anything that comes around their way. For the most part, as babies, they're gonna be eating mostly insects and a little bit less veggies. Kind of like a bearded dragon, 80, 20, 80% 80 insects, 20% veggies. And as they get older, they tend to slow down and eat more veggies and less insects. They love anything from crickets, mealworms, superworms, uh, phoenix worms, wax worms. Variety is always key. Same thing with the vegetables. Any of the leafy greens, especially wildflowers. They love wildflowers, uh, hibiscus plants, anything like that, man. Like David dandelion. said, dandelions, you put it in there, they're going to destroy it. Now, whenever you have animals like these that are more arid type animals or for grasslands, you don't want to feed fruit. Fruit can be like a treat, like a blueberry or two here and there, but it's not something that you want to add into their diet on a regular basis. In my opinion, it's just better not to feed fruit at all. Stick with the leafy greens, the, the flowers, and you know alfalfa sprouts, things like that, and the insects. Now, whenever you feed insects, you always want to gut load those insects, and you want to make sure that you dust the insects with calcium and D3 for these guys. Very important. And when they're babies, we do feed them basically every single day. They're growing, so they need a lot of food. When they're adults, we really cut it back to like two or three times a week. And as David mentioned before, it's going to be mainly vegetables. Gigi skinks and some of these other skinks from Australia can go a very long time without drinking water. That doesn't mean they don't need water, but a lot of the moisture they get from the vegetables. You could also give them a very light mist in the morning, especially during like the rainy season or something as long as the enclosure is not holding the humidity, you know, you don't have a, a buildup of, of moisture in there. You wanna make sure it dries out completely. Typically, you wanna keep these guys around 30 to 50% humidity. They're not a rainforest animal. They are strictly grassland, like scrub type animal. Yeah, and any reptile with the spikes on the tails and stuff, like the humidity, the moisture can get really stuck in there so it can cause scale rot and a lot of other skin issues. Yeah, so it's not an animal that I would necessarily say put a big water dish in there. We actually don't really keep any water dishes in our agernia cages, mostly because the type of enclosure it is will also, mm -hmm. if the water spills in there or something, it's gonna stay humid for a while. It is important to keep in mind that you don't wanna be giving these guys a bath or soaking them mm -hmm. like you do with bearded dragons. So you wanna make sure that they stay dry. You could give them a little mist every now and then, but that's as, as much water as you're gonna give them. All right, so we're excited to announce that we have been working closely with our friend Eric, and he has these like really dope, colorful like what we're calling golden gigi skinks and this is it right here and we're going to be you know trying to breed these guys trying to see what's going on exactly with them they do seem to be a lot lighter and they have like brighter red eyes than the regular gigi skinks and those two 
So these are more of a high pattern Gigi skink and they actually keep it. As you saw, some of the adults, they lose that patterning. Babies kind of have it a lot, but um, these guys have even more and these guys tend to keep it. Now this line, this high pattern line of animals is actually what produced the golden line of animals. Yeah, and, and the cool thing about the differences is when they get bigger, you know, the, the darker animals tend to be a little bit more robust, bigger animals, but they're almost like, they're just like have no color or no pattern whatsoever. They're kind of dark like the parents we were showing you here earlier. But these golden ones, especially after they pop a fresh shed, they just like stick out like a sore thumb. It's just such a beautiful animal. And when it comes to skinks and, you know, like especially these Gigi skinks that are super underrated, they're not very well known. It's just exciting to have something else to work with and not just, you know, the regular Gigi skinks that everybody knows. Now, if you are interested in any of these Gigi skinks, the golden, the regulars, or the high patterns, we are making some of these available for the first time ever. So make sure you check them out on our website. And if you like our content, make sure you subscribe to all of our social media platforms. We got it all, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. We got it all, Tiki's Geckos. Make sure you follow us for individual content on every single platform. Thank you.